What's going on everyone? So we got this car next up on the dyno. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it back here a little bit because I want to make sure that some people can learn off this. So if you're not familiar with this channel, if you go back and you look at some of my older videos called Dyno Ready, this is pretty much uh, what this video is gonna be. But I haven't done one that's fully been like dedicated toward, towards that. So this car came in for a tune and contacted the customer. And right away I told him, I said, hey, are we doing a dyno inspection? And on his dyno um, waiver that he fills out, there's actually um, uh, a question that, have you done a boost leak test? And he put no. And I told him, I said, hey, just looking over your setup, I think we're gonna have issues, at least with a couple boost problems. Um, this is one of them right off the bat. You can see how the line is barely on, um, and it actually is very easy to come right off. Um, so what you're looking for when you do these, and I'm trying not to rip the line, so I'm twisting and pulling on it. The rule of thumb is when you're doing these vacuum lines is you want them to go on pretty damn hard. Um, what I mean by that is, see how easily that just went on? You should almost have to lubricate it and then get it on so it doesn't come off. And then, yes, you should have some type of clamp. Um, you can even do a zip tie on it. Not a huge deal. Something that's just going to hold it on there firmly. Because you got to imagine that I just took this off fairly easy. So when, he, when this thing actually heats up, this car is not hot at all. When this, everything heats up, well, the line's going to become a little bit more pliable. And it's going to want to come off even more. So um, the other stuff, too, and I asked this on Instagram not too long ago. So this is the PCV system. You can see that it goes here, goes underneath, and then it goes to a PCV valve, which stands for positive crankcase ventilation. Now, a PCV valve is an only, it's only a one-way valve. So it's supposed to let air out, but not in. So in an all-motor car, when you hit it wide open throttle, this actually will suck pressure from the crankcase. The problem is, if that valve wants to fail and you're boosting under pressure, well, you're going to be boosting into your crankcase on the bottom of your piston. So as your piston is being forced down, you're also forcing underneath, which you're going to crack your piston ring lands fairly quickly. So, you know, every now and then, too, we'll have a guy that says, well, you know, the, the valve is only a one-way valve. And, yeah, you know, I, I understand that. I get that. But are you going to trust that little PCV valve to hold? Um, you know, on, on the Hondas at least, they're not designed to see uh, boost pressure. So it's a smart idea. What we're going to do ultimately is just take this. We're going to cap it on the intake, or we're going to leave it vented out. You don't want to cap it on the block or the actual head because you want the block to vent. Uh, this is a real big thing on K-Series. A lot of guys will take it off and just block it off and cap it. And that's ultimately where your catch can would go. That's why you want a catch can because any excess pressure, any boost pressure that is gonna see its way through the piston ring lands, I'm sorry, the piston rings needs to escape and go somewhere. So if you're capping it off, you're just basically pressurizing your block even more and you're gonna ask for problems. And that, that's where too, maybe you know a buddy or maybe even yourself had, let's just say your oil pan gasket keeps blowing out you can't get it to seal. I've even seen some that are so bad that it starts pushing out the front main seal and the rear main seal. That's on an engine that's, you know, either built super loosely um, or an engine that's just on its last leg. There's other little stuff too. And, you know, I don't know if this is a genuine HKS blow-off valve, seeing how that the uh, emblem is not on here and also just judging by, you know, the wastegate is knockoff, the mounts are knockoff, the fuel regulators knock off. I'm gonna assume this is knock off. And, and a big problem with these usually is they're very easy to move, they spin, and ultimately they're gonna leak boost. So just another thing too, to keep your eye on. These filters, I've talked about this before and I've actually have been told specifically by people that, you know, hey, you, you saved me a great deal of hassle. See this little chrome piece? Inside, in the middle. Usually on the inside is the same type deal but they super glue it. So as soon as that wants to come off inside, it's gonna go through your intake pipe if you have one, and it's gonna destroy your turbo. 
So something that we will note. The other thing here that I saw now, you know, when we do a pre-dyno inspection, we're, we're under, we're, the car's under a microscope. We want to make sure we catch anything. I see some little coolant over here. You see the coolant on the edge. So I apologize, my phone cut me off because I'm low on memory. So you could see the coolant on the intake pipe, which made sure this line's not leaking and there's no coolant underneath here. You can also see some coolant on the actual radiator. There's like coolant built up in between here. So that leads me to believe either this hose was leaking at one point fairly recently, or possibly if I come over here, I can actually show you. See, this is all, I'll try to put my light right there. This is all wet right here, which my concern is, is this car, has there been, has he been boosting on it? And possibly, is it pushing coolant? Because coolant will push through here and then it's gonna to wanna to overflow and then it's gonna get, get, get in this area, could spray. A little background, this is a built motor, he built it. He was having issues before it even came here. Uh, one of them was oil pressure. Uh, the oil pressure, he told me what it was reading and I told him it was really, really incorrect. And he said that the gauge was bad, so he said he swapped out the gauge and it's fixed. Um, other stuff too. And we're not sure on this one just quite yet. But if you look over here, so if you're not familiar with how to look for an exhaust leak, you're basically going to look for carbon soot. And you can see on the side of the downpipe, I'm going to try to hold my light right there. All this looks like black carbon soot. So you can see up here, there's right there, there's some blackness which actually just could be a weld. Now the other thing too though, is when you look over here, do you see all that? So something's definitely not sealing. And if you look, you gotta look down below and I'm gonna try to maybe even hold my camera, but what I'm trying to show you guys, and I'm gonna zoom in here, give me a second. It almost looks like the flange is not sealing. You see how there's that little gap? Where's, where's my finger? There you go. There's a little gap right there. See that? Let my camera try to refocus. Come on now, camera. Okay, there, uh, whatever. Wants to focus. So you got an exhaust leak before the O2 sensor. And it would help if I zoomed out. There you, there, there you go. So that's gonna throw my air fuel readings off. How bad? I don't know. Is it good? No, not at all. Um, you know, I, I try to I try to relate stuff to, pe to, to things that people might know. Uh, you know, if you're not a tuner, you might not know. But, you know, you can go work out. You can go train for a marathon. Let's just say you're smoking two cigarettes a day. Is it a good thing? No. How bad is it? Oh, I don't know. Should you be doing it? No. Also see that there's a nut missing on the manifold. And this is, you know, as I've been talking about, this this all should be, this is all basic stuff. You know, this, this ain't this ain't rocket science. This ain't something like that we invented and, you know, hey, you can't have an exhaust leak. This is fairly common stuff. And in and, and all my videos, I've kind of talked about all this. The other thing I see right off the bat, too, up here, which I'll get underneath, is the oil return line. To me, it doesn't look like a hydraulic hose. Um, and for reference, hydraulic hoses can accept oil. Heater type hoses cannot accept oil. So what happens is they actually get very brittle and hard or they get soft and collapse. And just squeezing this a little bit, I'm gonna say that it is a heater hose. I'm trying to look and see if I can see any markings. So that will be noted. Uh, you know, down the road, he's gonna re definitely recommend, he's gonna wanna replace it. It should hold up on the dyno. Uh, the other thing too, is you got his fuel system here. So we got a couple things here. And this is gonna go back to when I was talking about the PCV. So the fuel line comes from here to there. And then the fuel line comes from the bottom of the regulator. There's a, a junction there. So we'll make sure that fitting is fairly tight. Eh. 
I almost feel like the hose is spinning. So once again, you're messing with fuel. You don't want to mess with fuel. Um, in a hot engine bay, it's going to spell disaster. The other thing is he has his purge solenoid hooked up. So the purge solenoid is right there. So the purge solenoid is kind of like a PCV valve as it is supposed to let fuel vapors from the tank, fuel tank, out into the charcoal canister down there. The problem is, once again, these ain't designed to see boost, at least on this car. So what happens if your boost in here, boost is coming through here, boost is coming through there, boost is going to your charcoal canister. Guess where the other side of the charcoal canister hooks up? And I can 100% 10 verify this because we have phone calls every now and then and it's like, hey, I just boosted my car. And when it gets into boost, I can almost, it almost sounds like something's bubbling. I'm like, oh, okay, do you have, um, you know, your, your purge solenoid hooked up and your emissions canister? Usually they'll say, you know, what is that? And I have to kind of explain it to them. Well, it's because you're literally boosting into your gas tank. So we're going to cap that off as well. We're going to cap it off at the intake manifold. And we're going to leave that all. Now that's everything I see so far up at top. I see other stuff too, like these knockoff boost controllers. They're so hit or miss, guys. Um, he does have, just want to make sure that they are NGK. I was going to say he does have NGK spark plug wires because they're blue, but these appear to be knockoff as well. No, no. Okay, there you go. They say NGK. I was going to say, I haven't seen those yet. Um, other stuff we're going to check is just to make sure that the injectors are, are tight in there and the boost leak test will ultimately find that. Now I did send him a base map to get this car started and running. He is on decapped fuel injectors. So if you're not familiar with fuel injectors and decapped basically uh, injectors, all these new style injectors are Bosch style injectors. Decapped injectors are basically guys either in their garage or maybe they're doing it on the on the side kind of part-time making some spare money They're literally taking the injector and opening it up more. So it flows more. The problem is consistency If you have one injector flowing 95% or let's just say a thousand cc's you have one injector flowing 75% one injector flowing 55% and let's just say 800 cc's and I can go on. What's going to happen? Well, the cylinders that are flowing less are going to lean out and ultimately you're going to cook your motor. So do I recommend decapped inject injectors? No, absolutely not. For some people that will say, well, uh, all the injectors are the same. They're Bosch style injectors and uh, you know, it looks the same. That's where quality control comes into play. You know, you look at some of the top injector companies in this industry, uh, fuel injector clinic, uh, injector dynamics, you look at the quality control that they have and look how they batch their injectors. They're going to take, you know, let's just say a hundred sets of injectors and they're going to make sure they all flow the same. And the ones that flow, let's say, let's say a thousand cc's and let's say two of them flow 970 cc's. They're going to batch them all together. So they're all flowing the same. And as a tuner, I'm going to tell you this, this is where you're going to have issues where you're going to have a rougher idle than you should your partial throttle is going to be on and off. Your air fuels are going to be inconsistent. And there's no way for us to tell as a tuner. Unless you physically are going to have a wide band on each pipe, which let's face it, you're not going to have that on a daily um, driven car. It's not worth it to save that money. It's just really not. I mean, even if everything else is a no name, you know, and even if you, I, I, you know, let's just say I built a motor, it only cost me a couple hundred bucks or whatever. I, I've said this before. You guys got to remember time is money. And as you maybe are younger, you maybe don't value your time as much, but just one of those things. So we're going to take care of what we could see up here. We're going to get it under, I'm going to get underneath and I'm going to take a look over that. And uh, we're going to go from there. We're going to make sure that, you know, put some, some zip ties on all these so they just don't want to come right off. As I said too, this one, I mean, they shouldn't be that, that easy, guys. They really shouldn't be. Um, you got to use some force to get those on. Hopefully, you guys are finding this video educational because I did stop doing these for a little bit, but I do want to bring them back because when I was doing them, a lot of people commented and, and said, and, and you literally came in and said, man, I learned a lot from that video. Please keep it up. Um, I learned a lot before I go to the dyno. And as I said before, you could be on the other side of the world. 
these videos are going to help you and you're going to help the tuner that is helping you and there's enough success to go around where i can i can do this and help other people because that's really ultimately why i got into this scene is to help people and um you know have people learn I haven't checked the battery terminals yet one of the biggest things we see is loose terminals you can see how that kind of moved i like that a little bit tighter I'd like that a little bit tighter too. Let's see what we got going on underneath. So we got the car up in the air and we're gonna go underneath here. Now, right off the bat, you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but all of this is just soaked with some kind of oil. Uh, so in this case, gonna just make sure that there's oil in the motor and we're gonna have to keep an eye on that during the tune. Looks like there's probably some transmission fluid that is leaking too. Once again, this is all just basic stuff, guys. See a sandwich plate, it's a knockoff sandwich plate. We have seen issues with those where the holes aren't drilled out correctly and has, and have caused oil pressure problems. So, something to keep in mind. Um, everything else underneath here that I see, you can see that the oil return line, so is leaking. You can also see that there is a 90 degree fitting. So, there's a 90 degree fitting coming off the turbo. You never want to use a 90 degree fitting on a return line if you absolutely don't have to. Uh, you can also see on the block, you can see the carbon soot. So we got more carbon soot possibly coming from the turbo. And you can also see it, there you go. You got a downpipe, uh, you can definitely see the leak right there on the downpipe. Um, the rule of thumb too about the oil return line about the 90 degree fitting is i mean it, it's kind of common sense there i mean if you don't know you don't know but the oil is not going to want to flow because it's hitting that wall as soon as it comes out of that that fit uh the turbo you know it's not going to help the flow so definitely not something you want to do um you can see more coolant underneath the on the intake um the t-bolt clamps Let's see if i can do this where you guys can actually get some light Okay, guess it just helps like that. T-bolt clamps are old and rusted. Not a huge deal, but what I don't like to see, I got some more oil too, that, look at that leaking right there, which there's no oil over here. Uh, what I don't like to see is the clamps are not fully on. So you can see how this one is, not only is it not fully on, there's a little bit of a gap. I'm trying to get the gap there. There's a gap on the bottom right here. So the rule of thumb about T-bolts, The rule of thumb, we get this question every now and then, and when we have new people start here, when you tighten a T-bolt clamp, you want to tighten it where it literally feels like you're going to crush the pipe with the T-bolt. So seeing how these clamps are going to be rusted and whatnot, if we do have a boost leak, probably going to have to replace the clamps. We're going to see the other big issue too with um, some of this pipe, and I don't know because it's not taken off yet, but the less expensive or cheaper pipe is they don't have bead rolls on the end, which is going to want to cause a leak and going to want to blow off. So I'm going to lower it back down. I'm going to hook up the boost leak tester. We're going to see if we can find some boost leaks and uh, go from there. And I, I missed this in the video, but you can literally see that the radiator is leaking too from the bottom hose. You can see all the leftover stuff. Guys, I had to split this up in... Uh two parts so part two is coming up soon stay tuned